singer R. Kelly is back in court. How much time he's going to spend behind bars for some disturbing charges coming up. Another mild evening. What to expect by morning ahead of a warm summer afternoon. And he makes weddings feel like red carpet events thanks to his stunning bridal designs and evening wear. Find out how Andrew Kwan is making his mark from a surprising location. Hey, what's up, friends? Welcome back. This is News for Now for June 29th. I'm Kay Ingram. Now, first up, R. Kelly is sitting in a Brooklyn jail cell and will be incarcerated for a while longer after facing a judge on sentencing day for sex trafficking and other charges. The 55-year-old R&B singer has been sentenced to 30 years. He was in court as victims read their impact statements following the abuse. It's been one of the most high-profile cases last year where evidence and witness testimony showed that the artist engaged in a pattern of abusing women, including minors, for close to three decades. R. Kelly denied all the allegations, but court records revealed that he used his celebrity, his fame, and his money to lure the victims into his inner circle, promising them a big break in the music industry, only to be sexually abused by the singer. Kelly still faces prostitution charges in Minnesota and federal child pornography charges in Illinois. Meanwhile, convicted sex trafficker Ghislaine Maxwell will be spending the next two decades behind bars. A federal judge sentenced Maxwell Tuesday for helping Jeffrey Epstein sexually abuse underage girls on his properties. Before learning her fate, Maxwell spoke to the victims, telling them, quote, I'm sorry for the pain you experienced. The judge recommended Maxwell serve her sentence at a women's prison in Danbury, Connecticut. Her lawyers say that they're planning an appeal. And the November ballots are now set for New York's race for governor. NBC News is projecting Kathy Hochul as the winner of the Democratic primary. Antonio Delgado is the projected winner in the lieutenant governor's race. Congressman Lee Zeldin is the projected winner of the GOP gubernatorial primary. His running mate will be former New York City Police Commander Allison Esposito. Now, there's a war of words going on after Mayor Eric Adams said that former Mayor Rudy Giuliani should be investigated for filing a false police report. That's in response to Giuliani's claims of assault at a Staten Island supermarket. This surveillance video shows Giuliani chatting with a group of people when Daniel Gill comes up behind him and slaps him on the back. Giuliani says he suffered shoulder pain and that he could have been seriously hurt. Jill was initially charged with second degree assault, but the charges were downgraded to harassment and menacing. During a news conference, Adams commented on the slap, which later prompted Giuliani to fire back. And someone needs to remind uh, former Mayor Giuliani that falsely reporting a, a, a crime is a crime. And from what he stated about being punched in the head, uh, felt like a bullet, you know, what he stated, that was a lot of creativity. I filed nothing, idiot, so you can't prosecute me for anything, okay? You know why you're worse than de Blasio? You're, you're a phony, that's why. Jill's attorney said he had no intention of causing the former mayor any physical injury. Jill is due back in court on August 17th. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Another beautiful summer afternoon and another really nice evening ahead. Not sticky, pleasant, a little bit of a breeze, especially early on as temperatures hang around 80 degrees through the early dinner hour. Sunset at 831 and we'll see fair skies overnight, 75 degrees by 11 o'clock. It does stay dry. You can see the hour by hour forecast, mainly clear skies. Temperatures do dip into the 50s north and west by tomorrow morning, 59 in Poughkeepsie, Sussex into the upper 50s. Monticello in the low to mid 50s will be milder though in the city 68 degrees for that low temperature 60s from Long Island and down the shore as well on our way up to a very warm afternoon. Now with summer wedding season in full swing one New York designer is rolling out the red carpet for brides each and every day. New York Live met up with Andrew Kwan for a tour of his surprising studio and a look at two very special fittings. <laughs> You may have seen his bridal or evening wear designs at Bergdorf's or Neiman Marcus. Designer Andrew Kwan is making a splash in the fashion world, all out of his apartment in Midtown.
Hi, Hi. how are you? Good, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for having me in your design studio, but also your apartment. Yes, both. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to do a little tour. I'm yes, excited. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your line. Red carpet has been a huge dream of mine. So what better way than bringing red carpet to bridal and creating those red carpet moments for bride. Two of your dresses were at the premiere party for And Just Like That, the Sex and the City revival, so I need to see those. We had these two dresses featured. This green is a modern take on my signature skirts and my collections. And the yellow is inspired from the hills of Provence and the sunlight hitting down. And I think yellow really symbolizes a new day. I have some clients coming in and we could do a fitting and I'll show you. Oh yes, I want to see the fitting, awesome! You look beautiful, Grace. Oh my God. I mean, I love the way this looks, but I imagine you can't walk around with a dress like this. No, so what you know, we'll really do is, we'll bring some of this layering in, so we can rather pull up the layers and pin where it's really going to be needed, and so that we don't lose any of the layers, essentially. Or we could really just get rid of some of the layers. So the biggest part of this dress that is going to be so important is what I call a red carpet ready train. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. All about creating details and moments in the dress and really accentuating some parts of the body, but not too much. And this asymmetry really gives it this type of shape and you're eyes follow all throughout the dress instead of just that one part. Um, I feel severely underdressed now, so I think I'm gonna have to come back here and get a dress for you. You're welcome back here anytime, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. And a New Jersey family is pleading for threats to stop at their home. They're getting an influx of threatening packages sent to them, all addressed to Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito. Problem is, he doesn't live there anymore. News 4's Melissa Colorado is in West Caldwell with the story. Hate mail intended for Supreme Court Justice Samuel Alito is ending up on the wrong doorstep here in New Jersey. Police in West Caldwell say a family with no connection to the Alitos, they're being harassed all because Samuel Alito used to live in their home 15 years ago. The TikTok video only lasts for six seconds, but it's what we've blurred out that's caused days of headaches and paranoia for a family in New Jersey. Doxing videos like this one show what they claim are the home addresses of the five conservative Supreme Court justices who voted to overturn Roe v. Wade. But in the case of Justice Samuel Alito, the video has his old address, and now police say the family that lives there is paying the price. They have nothing to do with whatever's going on all this political stuff. Alex Riebling lives next door to the frustrated family. Riebling says his mother had to recently evacuate their home after police showed up to investigate a suspicious package that was dropped off next door. I think it just kind of sucks for them because, I mean, the previous owners aren't here anymore, so it's just a new family. It was Justice Alito himself who drafted the majority opinion to revoke the constitutional right to an abortion. Police say he moved out of West Caldwell after being confirmed to the Supreme Court. The situation has gotten so tense for the homeowners that there's an officer stationed outside to make sure the family is not being harassed. In a Facebook post, the police department warns they will investigate and prosecute anyone who interferes with this family's peace and quiet. They don't live here anymore, so they, no, nobody should be bothering anybody. In West Caldwell, New Jersey, Melissa Colorado, News 4 New York. All right, well, thanks for joining us. As always, we'll see you back here tomorrow.